Praise the Lord, everybody. It's glad to, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord again today to worship with you all. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Um, I was looking up the number just now. I was thinking about when Brother Ray was singing that song, All of My Help Comes From the Lord. Certainly want to uh, keep all of those uh, in prayer in the Middle East, Israel, Gaza, um, all those in, in the Middle East. As that conflict continues to go on, but also let us remember those in Maine. If you haven't uh, watched the news this week, 19 people killed in Maine this week in another active shooter event. And I was trying to look up the number for this year. I can't find it right now, but we have probably surpassed all the active shooter events we had in 2022. So let's remember to keep our country in prayer, keep everyone in prayer, our leadership, um, but all of our help comes from the Lord. Our scripture today will come from uh, Lamentations chapter 3. <coughs> Lamentations chapter 3, and we'll begin with verse 22. <coughs> Lamentations chapter 3, starting with verse 22. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone and keep silent because God has laid it on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes him and be full of reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever. Though he causes grief, yet he will show compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve children of men to crush one's feet. All the prisoners of the earth to turn aside the justice due a man before the face of the Most High, or subvert a man in his cause, the Lord does not approve. Who is he who speaks and comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? It is not from the mouth of the Most High that woe and well-being proceed. Why should a living man complain, a man for punishment of his sins? Let us search out and examine our ways and turn back to the Lord. Let us lift our hearts and hands to God in heaven. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 through 41. God had a blessing to his red word. Let us pray. Father, we come this morning to say thank you again, God. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies, God. Your mercies, God, that are new every morning, God. We thank you for your grace, God, how you kept us, how you bless us each and every day, God. And we see so much that goes on around us, God, but you keep your hands and protection around us, God. We thank you, Lord, for healing. We thank you, Lord, for protection. We thank you, Lord, for provision. We just thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. And Lord, as we go into this worship, God, this service today, God, we ask, God, that you forgive us our sins for the thought, our thought, word, and deed. Continue, Lord, to guide our every step. Order our steps, Lord, in your word. Pray, God, that you would uh, continue just to bless this ministry, God, each and every person that is here today. Those, Lord, that wanted to be here today but could not, we ask God that you add a special blessing to them as well. Lord, we pray that you have your way in the service today. Anything, God, is not like you, we ask you to remove it. 
any distractions, God, that we might have on our minds today, God. We ask God that you remove those as well. Lord, we lift up those, God, that are in Israel today, God, those uh, in the Middle East, God, as that conflict rages on, God. We pray for our world leadership. Pray for leadership here at home in the East United States, God. Lord, we uh, pray for our local leadership. And Lord, we lift up the families, God, of those in Maine today, God, uh, that suffered so much tragedy this past week, God. And God, we just ask God again that you continue to guide us, Lord, and help us, God, to uh, seek you, God, each and every day uh, of our lives, Lord. And God, we be careful to give your name all the honor, glory, and praise. We our prayer in Jesus' name. How great is our God? He's wonderful. Let's give God some glory for these wonderful women who survived a traumatic experience. God, we thank you for healing their bodies. God, we thank you for healing their minds. We give you praise. Lord God, we thank you. May you be glorified. Joy, let all the earth rejoice. Be ready. 
Ron Seller, for your miracle, Sarah, for your miracle, Lenny, and their brothers. We just praise God for your miracle. You being a cancer survivor. And we say it today in that song, our hearts are filled with praise. Our hearts truly should be just gotten home about 30 minutes before the fatal accident on 72. Mm. And I just give God thanks for traveling grace and, and tell us that we should cherish the moments we 
each other when we're in it. So many lives are being lost. And so thank God for every day and love each other. So that's what I want to talk about today. Matthews 22, 35 through 40. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You should love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I want to just talk this morning from this thought. This thought, Jesus made it simple. Jesus made it simple. In doing research concerning commandments of the Bible or in the Bible, multiple sources said that there were 613 commandments given by God in the Old Testament. These commandments fall into two uh, categories. One category contains a list of what to do. The other category contains a list of what not to do. Yeah. Of the 613 commandments, most Christians are familiar with the 10 commandments found in Exodus chapter 20 and uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5. Even with this short list of 10 commandments, we have a problem remembering them and we have a problem <coughs> keeping them. When we move from the laws to the prophecies, there are hundreds of biblical prophecies in scripture. And once again, most of us don't know all the biblical prophecies. <coughs> but Jesus makes it simple by stating two great commandments which sum up all the law and the prophets. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. These two great commandments that Jesus give, um, they are centered around one word. The one word is love. In essence, Jesus said that if we love God and we love our neighbors as ourselves, we fulfill all the law and the prophets. Again, 613 commandments. In the Old Testament, the, the, the Bible is filled with biblical prophecies and and word that the prophets gave to the people to live by. And Jesus said, if you just do these two great commandments, if you love God and love your neighbor as yourself, you can fulfill all the law and the prophets. When we read the Bible, love is at the center of the Bible. It is impossible to remove or separate love from Scripture. And the reason it is impossible to separate love from scripture is because God is love. Mm -hmm. First John 4, 7, 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another for God is love. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God for God is love. To remove love from the Bible is to remove God from the Bible. This is impossible because God is inseparable from his word. The Bible said that in the beginning was the word. And the word was God and the word was with God. The God of the Bible who demonstrates love. Throughout the word of God, you go from 
Genesis all the way through Revelation, you, you'll find demonstrations of God's love. It is said that there's only one message of the Bible, one central message, and that's the message of God's love for humanity. When we, we just scroll through the pages of the Bible and see all the demonstrations of God's love, but God's greatest expression of his love is found in John 3.16. Amen. For there the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The God of the Bible, who is love, commands us to do one thing, to fulfill his law and the words of the prophets. He tells us to love. Love is so vital unto Jesus only gave us one commandment. Jesus said, this commandment is a new commandment that I give to you. He says to us, I want you to love one another. Out of all the commandments that he could have given, Jesus said, I just command you to love. John 13, 34, Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. Jesus just kept it simple. Unlike the Pharisees of Jesus' day who burdened the people with rules and laws, Jesus gave us only one commandment to love. The people in Jesus' day, they got tired, they got burdened down. As these Pharisees laid upon them all these rules and regulations, it made life hard for them. And, and sometimes, even as Christians, we make things hard by trying to give people a bunch of rules and regulations. But Jesus, on the other hand, Jesus made it simple. Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you. Yes, yes. And this commandment is for you to love one another. You see, Jesus knew the power of love. He knew the potential of love. And Jesus knew the product of love. You see, Jesus understood something that we need to understand. Jesus understood that love could change the world. You see, love is what the world needs today. There are people who are searching for the answer to things that have become problematic throughout our society. Yet we fail to understand that the answer has already been given. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what this world would be like mm -hmm. if we only took this commandment that Jesus gave, Jesus said to love. Love is the answer, this simple action is enough to change the world today. Just if we come to the place that we would love, can you imagine what would cease if we love one another? If there was love in the world, people wouldn't walk around and, and, con and conduct those mass shootings that we hear about. Amen. If there was love, we then wouldn't have to worry about acts of violence. We wouldn't have to worry about uh, people being burglarized. We wouldn't have to worry about people stealing and, and, and doing all of the things that are, are coming in our society. Like if we only did this one thing, if we had love one for another, Jesus said, I'm not giving you a bunch of rules. I'm not giving you a bunch of regulations. He said, but I give you a new commandment that you love one another. As I have love you. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus kept it simple, didn't he? Yes, yes. Again, reflect back again on all of the prophecies, all of the, the commandments in Scripture. Jesus just kept it simple. You see, Jesus kept it simple and he made it easy. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we make things complicated mm -hmm. and we make them difficult. The Christian journey is sometimes said to be difficult. But I want to ask you a question. Should the Christian journey be difficult? Mm -hmm. Just think 
about that for a moment. We talk about how hard it is to be a Christian. And I'm not suggesting that the Christian journey is not without challenges, but should the Christian journey be as difficult as we make it? I ask this question in light of the fact that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that we need to live right, to honor God. God has given us all of those resources. And not only has God given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness, God, he walks this journey with us. Every day, God, he walks by our side. God said, not only will I walk with you, he said that I'll live with you. He said that I'll be in you. And so, so God has given us what we need, and then he walks this journey with us day by day. You see, our journey is complicated in part because people refuse to love. We know that we're supposed to love. If I ask any of us today, are we supposed to love everybody? We say yes. But do we refuse to love? And once again, the answer is yes. We know what we've been given. I've already given you the commandment that Jesus gave us when he spoke to those disciples. This new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. But I've discovered that love is MIA. MIA is a military term that refers to a soldier who is missing during active service. As Christians, do you know that we are enlisted in the service of the Lord? Amen. Every one of us, the day that we got saved, don't you know that you became a part of the arm of God? You are enlisted in the service of the Lord. But even though we are enlisted in the service of the Lord, too many of us have love that has gone AWOL. <laughs> Just ran off and left. <laughs> Our love is missing. Can, can I at least get us to think about that and maybe just come to some consensus in this place today that our love is missing? Amen. Amen. You see, love is missing from many worldly people, but, but, but I declare today love is missing from far too many believers. The Bible teaches us that there will be a time when love grows cold. Matthew 24, 12. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said that because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. That's a new King James. I want, you to, I want you to hear this from the Living Bible. This is translation. It says sin will be rampant everywhere and will cool the love of many. Jesus makes it clear that the more wickedness increases in the world, the less people will love. We see this self-fulfilling prophecy unfolding before us. You see, the more the wickedness happens, the more people's love just go by the wayside. As humans, more compasses fail, the love fades. And you think about it. This is what Jesus is saying in Matthew 24, 12. He said the more wickedness increases, he said that the love will grow cold. Mm -hmm. The love will cool off. And, and so, so Jesus, he kept it simple when he gave us these two great commandments. And if we do these, our moral compasses will stay intact. The first of the two great commandments to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, our soul, and our mind. What Jesus is teaching us, and we should understand the further we get away from God, the colder our love becomes. But then on the other hand, the closer we get to God, the stronger our love becomes. Here's the question for us today. Each of you take this examination. Is your love getting colder 
or is your love getting hot? Please answer that question. I don't want you to look around at other folks. I want you to look at yourself and answer this question. Is your love getting hotter or is your love getting colder? We need to conduct a temperature check. I mean, you know, most of the time people check their temperature and they think they're running a fever. But today I want you to check your love temperature. I need you to check it out to see which way your love is going. Is your thermometer as it relates to love, is it getting cold or is it about to bottom out? Or is it about to go out of the top because you've grown so much in your love? Is your love getting hotter? Is your love getting colder? Conduct that temperature check now. You can do it while you're sitting there because you can examine your own heart. Jesus conducted a temperature check on the church of Ephesus. And he found that this church's love had waned. Revelation 2, verses 2 through 4, Jesus said to this church of Ephesus, he said, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and, and are not and found them lying. Verse 3, he said, and you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Verse 4, he said, nevertheless, I have something against you because you left your first love. Let me, let, me just, let me just help you folks today. This church of Ephesus, they, th this church was a busy church. This church was doing a lot of kind of work. This church was holding a standard. They tested those who said that they were apostles and the Bible said found that they were lying. They labored, they persevered, but then Jesus speak to them. He said, yes, I got something against you. What I got against you, you left your first love. What was Jesus talking about when he was referring to them leaving their first love? Jesus was not talking about the church not loving the work. You see, it is possible for folk to love the work in the church and still don't have the right kind of love. I, 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 I don't know if you encountered them, but over the years, I've had my share of good, hard-working church folk who didn't have any love. Jesus wasn't talking about their work. You read it for yourself. When you go home, he said, I know your works. I know your labor. I know your patience. I know the things you're doing. He said, but something is still missing. Jesus said that you left your first love. Jesus was talking about this church had become distant from him. In other words, he said that this church's love had grown cold. They, their love for him had grown cold. And there are some folk who just love to work in the church. Mm -hmm. And I need to say I wish more people worked in the church. Amen. But Amen. I'd rather have folk not working in the church if they have love for the church and don't have any love for Christ. Amen. Jesus said, I got something against you. I checked out your temperature with your love and you have become cold. What about you today? Mm. What about your love for Christ? Have your love for Christ, or has your love for Christ become cold? Jesus just kept it simple. Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor. Mm. Yes, yes. To love God is to obey him. Mm. And if we love God, we will reverence him, we'll honor him. If, if we really love God, we will allow him to occupy his rightful place in our lives. Jesus told us about this. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you when God is loved right. And he takes the rightful place in our lives. And when we love God, then is the door open for us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Do you know that some things can only happen horizontally because of what happens vertically? Yeah. You see, horizontal means this way. Mm -hmm. Vertical means this way. And when we align things this way, mm -hmm. things 
will automatically flow this way. Yeah, yeah. You see, in other words, we got to do something with God yeah. before we can do things right with our fellow man. Amen. And whenever our love for God grows cold, then something happens to our love for our fellow man. We need to keep it right. We need to make sure, first of all, we got it right this way. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's get this vertical connection. The psalmist said in Psalm 118.5, he said, I call on the Lord in distress, and the Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. What was the psalmist talking about? The psalmist said, when I was in distress, I was in trouble. I needed a way. Then I called on God vertically. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? God, he moved horizontally. Amen. God did something in the earth realm. In other words, when we get some things right with God this way, things automatically happen this way. Listen, there are say that when you connect with God this way, something happens yeah. this way. Yeah. What did Jesus say in Matthew yeah. 6? Jesus said, he said that when you pray, don't worry about praying this way. Uh -huh. don't, don't worry about folk talking about how good you pray yeah. this way. Uh -huh. yeah. Don't try to get it right so folk can brag on you. And they say, oh, he's a praying man or a praying woman. Don't pray this way. Jesus said what we need to do is we need to pray this way. He said that when you pray in secret, God in secret will reward you openly. So when we get it right this way, it's going to show up this way. I tell you, I tell you today, I wish that there would be more folk who would get it right this way. We would get this vertical connection that leads to a horizontal connection which finds its expression through love. Yeah. How much do you love God? When we go through the Bible, we'll discover that there, it lays out two primary obligations. I mean, you go from cover to cover. Let's keep it simple. It simply lays out two primary obligations. The first obligation it lays out is our obligation to God. Our dedication, our commitment to God. God's rightful place in our lives. And then it moves from our obligation to God to our obligations to our fellow man. You see, and only when we truly love God can we truly love our fellow man. Only when we truly love God will we treat our fellow man the way we want to be treated. You can't, you can't treat your brother and sister right until you first of all get it right with God. Amen. When, when we get this love connection with God, We'll pray for our fellow man as we should pray for him or her. We, we pray because we love God and we love one another. When, when we love God, we love our fellow man like, and we will do unto him or her the way we want them to do to us. Amen. That's when we got the right love to it. Everybody need to think about that today. Every believer in here, Jesus said, you, you do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Amen. And then Jesus tells us that we ought to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. How many of you love yourself today? How many of you love yourself today? Do, do you really love you? I don't know if you love, I love me. I don't like to hurt me. This is what Jesus wants us to understand. Jesus was saying that if you love your neighbor as yourself, if you wouldn't hurt yourself, then you shouldn't hurt your neighbor, your fellow man. Amen. Your neighbor is those people sitting beside you, the people who live in your community. Your neighbor is the people that you meet in the mall, across the street, on your job, throughout this world. He said you ought to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, he just kept it simple. Everything God expects us to do towards him and towards others can be done if we only love right. Yeah. That's, that's not so hard. Jesus makes it simple, but again, we make it difficult. 
Jesus said to love. Yeah. Now, now I'm almost finished because there are some folk who will argue today and say it's hard to love. <laughs> you go down the list and you think about all of the things folk did to you. <laughs> you go down the list and you feel like people have offended you. You go down and listen, you think about those folk who just don't treat you like you're a brother or sister in Christ. And then we say that it's, it's hard to love them. People have heard us deeply. Probably everybody in here has have dealt, have dealt with some sort of church hurt in your life. People in here today, you know they've hurt you. And then on the other hand, you hurt them too. And then we say it is difficult love. We make this argument. But can I tell you today that God made it possible for us to love. And, and loving is a matter of the will. Mm -hmm. Listen to what Paul said. Paul said in Romans 5, 5, he says, Now hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the spirit who is given unto us. Let me read that again because that's some hard places in some of our hearts today. We're holding on to some stuff, but I need you to hear what God says. I need this word to enter into your heart. He says in Romans 5 and 5, he says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. In the Greek, it simply means that God's love, it simply gushes out. It, it pours out, it is spilled out, it runs over in our lives. This is what God did to us when, did for us by the power of the Holy Spirit. God, he places his love inside of us. Whether you choose to love or not, if you choose not to love, it's not because God has not given you what it takes to love. You can love today because of the power of the Holy Spirit. God didn't just give us just a little taste. God allowed that love to be poured out into our hearts, literally spilled over. God gave us this love through the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can understand how much God really loves us. Do you know you're loved by God? Do you know the extent of God's love for you? I mean, even, even when, when, when you feel like folk have done you wrong. You know that if you're real with yourself, nobody can treat you as bad as we treated God. Yeah. When God blessed our lives, God, he gave us so much. God, he delivered us. God, he, he's been good to us, but yet sometimes we still treat God so bad. But even at that God, he continues to love us. Sometimes when I peruse back over my life, I get ashamed of how I treated God. But I've come to the realization that the God of love, he didn't stop loving me because I messed up in life. The God of love, he didn't stop doing good things to me because I, I refused to obey him when I should have obeyed him. And I understand how good God has been to me. I understand how much I hurt God by my ways and by my actions. But through all, the love of God is still remains. And when the Holy Spirit shines, that light on how much God loves me, I can't help but to love other folk, even though they may not treat me the way that I want to be treated. I still got to love them because I understand how much God loves me. when they stoned him to death. Stephen died calling on the name of the Lord. But even when he was dying, Stephen said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Love will make you continue to care for folk when they do you wrong. And even if that's not good enough, you go back to Calvary and watch Jesus hanging on the cross.
walk in the love of God. You can do it today because of the power of the Holy Spirit. The love of God has been poured out in your heart. Now you must choose what you're going to love. But whether you All want right. to say, I'm not going to love as God told me to love. God wants to do a makeover today. God wants to change our hearts. All right. Listen, when, when nothing else could help us, love got the job done. And God is challenging us now to walk in love towards him and to walk in love towards our fellow man. Are there folk today who conducted this temperature check on your love? And your thermometer is bottom out. Or maybe it's just kind of halfway up the scale. Mm -hmm. Are you willing today to let God do a makeover in your heart? Wow. Are you willing today to let God erase some stuff? In your mind. He called us to do one thing, just so simple, <laughs> to love. That's not hard, is it? Nobody say it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to do it by yourself, it would be hard. Yeah. But God is not expecting you to do it by yourself. God poured it out in your heart. If you're saved today, God poured out his love through the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to ask you in a few moments to make a choice. A choice to continue to hold on to some things. Or make a choice to remember to still love.
servant. Yeah. For it is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Thank you. 